welcome to Second Class Cinema, the show where we watch a B-movie and immediately discuss it. I'm Tom. I'm here with Eric and Brittany. Hello. Hello. Hey, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We went out and watched a movie tonight, so the immediately discussed part is now just very quickly discussing. We're not going to go into the whole spiel here, not successes, failures, or risks, or anything. We're basically just going to summarize this movie, how we felt about it, and just kind of rate it. Um... So we went out, we watched a, a movie called Devil Story that was showcased uh, by the Arkham Film Society. So uh, thank you for, for showing us this movie. We appreciate that. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> this movie raises so many questions. <laughs> yes. So we got a lot. I mean, we don't have a lot to talk about, but there's definitely some points we want to hit. And so, yeah, Devil Story, 1985 French horror movie. Um I don't understand. <laughs> I, the first thing about this movie, French. Yes. It was French language. Okay. French crew and cast, assume. In, yeah, I mean, it seems, we saw yeah. the credits. Yeah, everyone's French. It looked like it was filmed in England, and then the cars had United States plates on them. That's I'm interesting. very confused. That's no, weird. you know all those giant castles in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Were they Florida plates? Oh yeah, they were Florida plates, yep. but it said Palm State, and I was like, "That's not right." Did they? Okay, so it was a movie that was in France that was pretending to be in Florida. I guess so. Yeah, Unless so that was, they were imports. Yeah, no, I don't believe that. One <laughs> second. Yeah, I don't. I was confused by that. Yeah, that's a, that's a general confusing point, as well as the plot I of the movie. Rest. Um, I didn't. So I guess this movie's about. Um. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Go on. Um, it's about things. Uh, so stuff happens to this lady. <laughs> That's the most accurate description I can think of. Um, <laughs> gosh, how are we going to tackle this one? Okay, so. Eric's got it. Um, a lady and her husband slash boyfriend uh, are traveling through the countryside, and they end up at a castle in Florida. Uh, Keep going. Where an old man who is always wearing combat fatigues and military boots and yeah. his wife reside. Uh, their car breaks down, so they stop into the house because it's currently in the middle of a storm, and they sleep overnight. Uh, the woman is frightened in the middle of the night and escapes for some reason. I think she's like off put by this black cat that she keeps saying or something something doesn't set right with her. Yeah, presumably she's having these like hallucinations. I, is you, that what we're like It believe? seems to be. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Meanwhile, the old man is trying to shoot a horse in a field for upwards of 15 minutes. Upwards of... At least. I mean, 15 minutes of movie time? At or? least yeah. 35 minutes. I the, mean, for his time... Real time, that, like 12 hours. 12 yeah. hours, yeah. Just in a field. If you're confused, you should be. Yeah. We're, we're trying Just. our hardest. <laughs> this is very coherent. Okay, so um, backtrack a little bit. Backtracking. There is also a ghoul okay. uh, present in this area, and he is dressed <laughs> in some sort of like ship admiral outfit. And he is wearing a cheap Halloween mask. I don't know if he's actually supposed to look like that or if he's just supposed to be wearing a mask. Um, I don't know. He's got like a big swollen like plastic face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a toxic like yeah, yeah, yeah. mongoloid. Yeah. Way less successful looking, but yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so he's, so he's, he's around. around. He's wandering around the countryside. He's committing murder. Um, he kills a couple of people at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, which uh, I thought was pretty. A whole lot. Yeah, that was that was a good part of the movie. The the opening sequence for this movie, excellent. Yes, it was fantastic. Yeah, really, this really. This movie started with a bang. Yeah, it, it it created a tolerance for you to watch the rest of the movie <laughs> in a really weird way. The woman <clears throat> runs into this ghoul along with her his mother, and they try to bury her in a coffin. In the meantime, they discover a. Mummy? A, a mummy 
and a vampire lady. <laughs> no, so okay. Here's what I here's here's what I actually gathered. I know I really couldn't comprehend what they were trying to get across in that se- sequence. I gathered that that lady was her daughter. Yeah, so her daughter had died. Whoever the lady at the house was, who wasn't the lady at the house though, right? No, she was like the, she was a different she lady. She was like the Mongoloid's mom. Yeah, yeah. So she was a different lady whose daughter died, who was the spitting image of our main character. Um, that's it. <laughs> she was like, why should she get to live while my daughter is dead? And then she just threw her alive into her daughter's tomb. Um, right. So yeah, then okay. the mummy came back to life and <laughs> the lady tried to run from them, but not really. And then got caught and then tried to run again, but not really. Uh, then she escapes into a field, steals a car. Is caught by them again. Lights him on fire with gasoline. Runs out of gasoline. Remembers that she used the gasoline to light him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> they effectively show this by giving us a flashback to 30 seconds previous. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did light that guy so on fire. I forgot what happened under a minute ago. <laughs> I did forget, so I'm glad they did that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some of the elements of this movie, that, that I don't know what they were trying to do. So we got... Um, at first, this woman is being tormented by a black horse. Mm-hmm. Our main character, she's being like tormented by. Well, at f- actually, no, I'm sorry. At first, it was a cat. Black it was cat. a black cat. Yes, yeah. that attacked her when they pulled over on the side of the road. Yeah, and then she was all like, "Oh my god, we need to get out of here. I'm not going anywhere." That was so annoying. That was the worst. And then she was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, she was hallucinating." She was like, I- <laughs> she's like, "We need to get out of here. I'm not going anywhere. I want to go home." <laughs> We we're like, make up your fucking mind. Yeah. What are you, eight? <laughs> and, and this movie was dubbed, and they did that again at, at a different point uh, in the movie when, when they went to the castle house, and the wife of the house was explaining to them a story about a boat. I, I guess. This boat comes into play later, but it's really unclear as to how, like, an English ship wrecked on the island that, where they were or on the land. Yeah, I don't understand the boat part. <laughs> Either. But it this showed up. a fucking mystery. And what was weird, too, was obviously the boat thing that sh- turned up was a miniature. Mm-hmm. So I honestly <laughs> thought it was something small. Yes, I was getting equally confused. <laughs> and so, and, they, and then they approach this thing like it's huge. And I'm like, no, wait. That, I thought it was like a little tiny thing. And it took me a while to even understand that it was a big boat. And then they used a lot of stock footage. <laughs> of boats like in wild tumultuous seas yeah just terrible stock footage of like beaches i really want to just explain the end of this movie explain it, makes it no fucking go sense. for it please <laughs> do uh so after she runs out of gas she finds the old man who 12 hours later is still shooting the horse they run together to the beach where they find the <laughs> ass end of the ship hanging out of like the cliff yeah, which was that is what, what it was. Yeah, I, well, I thought it was the the front of the ship. I believe. The and hull. the old man was like, "Oh, we found it. It's mine. I'm rich. Yay!" And You're then you're all he, my slaves. And then his throat gets ripped out by a mummy. And then where this mummy came from, nobody knows. Um, him and Bride of Frankenstein were just there. Yeah, um, no idea. Yada yada yada. <laughs> you know how it goes. Yeah. She shoots a powder keg that explodes and kills the mummy and the bride of were led to believe. And then cut to her waking up back at the castle and the old lady is just like, oh, I'm going to bring you some tea and toast. You must have had a crazy dream. And then she's like, I must have had a crazy dream. And then she went in the bathroom and her raincoat and boots were there she was from the night before. Which she was wearing. Yeah. And then she's like, I'm going to go for a walk. And then she walks back to the beach and then she trips and the ground swallows her. <laughs> The end. <laughs> yeah, so she... For all intents and purposes, that is the end. Well, she goes th- She goes to this area. It's not even a beach. It's just like a rocky valley. Mm-hmm. And she finds these shotgun shells that she shot the, the baby powder barrels with. <laughs> and then she trips and, yeah, she gets eaten by grass. The grass just like opens up and then closes. I mean, I'm assuming that they entered into hell at some point in time. But then it cuts to the castle again during a storm again. 
and there's another couple outside in a convertible and they're like oh you got a room for the night and then it cuts to the old man inside the house and he puts his knife in his boot like he did when the original couple got there and he's like oh they lost their way which is exactly what he said with the first couple so yeah is it like a hellish loop yeah well and then also the ghoul starts rolling up (laughs) with the the coffin (laughs) thing yeah he's he rolls up right at the very like the credits roll right after he shows up so I'm like, what? what, what? <laughs> yeah, because it shows us like the old couple again, and then it shows outside where the uh, like witchy woman and the ghoulish dude are walking by with a casket again. Yeah, that I just I don't know because the movie starts with I feel like this movie every single day of the shoot of this movie if they changed what they were doing. <laughs> so he was an exercise in ineptitude. So <laughs> we made another stop at the Halloween store. We got to change the script. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts out with what you think is going to be a slasher movie. So our ghoul wipes out four or five people real quick. Yeah. Like, and it's pretty entertaining slasher type super shit. Super comedic. Yeah. yeah. Very silly. Lots of blood like, spurts. Yeah. Like he just slashes someone once and then they turn around and they have like slashes all over their face and are spurting blood oh my god over the top oh and that person who was skipping around <laughs> with wood oh my god. was that a man or a woman dude i didn't know if the first four people we saw were men or women i had no idea <laughs> i don't know if there was a real gender ambiguity in the 80s in france but i couldn't tell what the hell was going on like and honestly there was like a dude who started out dead in a tent and i was like oh that's a dude and i cut to another shot i'm like is that a woman and then they cut back out, and I was like, no, no, that's a dude. The, the <laughs> skipping through me, because I thought it was a little boy at first. Me too, but then I thought it was a woman cast as a little boy. Now I'm like really a bun- confused. Like a bundle of sticks. I'm very, Feed very confused dream. now. Yeah, it was definitely out there. Definitely a weird movie. Josh, what did you do to <laughs> us? Yeah, I, I'm not sure what happened. But I do know I kind of liked it. It was Me definitely too. an experience. It was it was kind of um, kind of deathbedy, yep. Kind of like deathbed in, in its incoherence, kind of. But in its entertainment as well, you know what I mean? Like it, you kind of sit there and you're watching this movie and you just kind of watch in awe. You're just kind of like, what? Why did they what? do this? I think it's like anticipatory. You're waiting for it to make sense, and it just <laughs> never really does. Yep. Yeah. Also, it really bothered me how much, how slow everything was in this movie. Like, the people. Like, everything that was being done took ten times the amount of time it should have. Like, people dying. <laughs> that guy, when he got his throat ripped out, he was like, uh, 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 And then he stops, and you think he's gonna, like, fall, and he's like, uh. <laughs> I was like, oh, my jeez, what are you doing? Yeah, and I mean, it's actually, it was a tight hour 12 right that's what imdb says it was short i mean mm-hmm. we i mean the movie was an hour and 15 minutes long like, it was short well i loved it <laughs> and uh i mean and for a movie that is an hour and 15 minutes everyone moved slow in it if everyone was moving normal speed this movie would have been 40 minutes oh yeah easily um yeah um any, anything else we want to just throw out there. I'm trying to. It's like memory those wise. Those fake cat sounds were the worst. Yeah. Oh god. And the, <laughs> dude, if I heard that horse whinny one more time. <laughs> oh, the sound in this movie was really terrible and grating. Yeah, it was bad. Everything was extra loud. Frequently out of sync with the action on the screen. Yeah, yeah. and like tinny and just like ugh. Warbly and not good. But you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. This is too <laughs> weird. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're in a definite state of confusion, and yeah, this is a little different than than our normal thing. And I think we're, I think the goal of this is just to kind of recollect this movie. Yes. In and in trying to make somewhat sense of it, do we have any questions that have come up during the course of watching this movie that we can recall? Um, I think for us to have questions, it would have had to have followed some kind of logical construct, which it didn't at all. That is true. But I'm glad we didn't look up the synopsis and we just kind of muscled our way through it because <laughs> I really wanted to see a how much we could remember, b how much we could make sense of. So apologies for this plot description being yeah. extra long. I mean, I guess yeah. it can kind of fall back on the fact that most of it maybe takes place in a dream, so it doesn't have to make narrative sense. <laughs> maybe <laughs> if but you're the- trying to make a competent film, it does. <laughs> but in this case. 
They just decided to do whatever. <laughs> I was going to say, if they're making a narrative film, it should make narrative sense. Right, yeah. Uh, but not I will give them one. credit. It does feel like a fever dream, and maybe that's what they were setting out to do. I don't know. I, I don't see, know. I, I had a hard time understanding if the, its confusion was on purpose. If that was something they were going for? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm willing more to chalk it up to director incompetence than intentional direction. Yeah, but I feel like they also... I feel like this movie changed when it started getting edited. So I feel like they shot one movie and changed it a bunch, and then the editor gets this film and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, I guess I'll slap this together. I don't know. The editor had to have been terrible as well. Because oh, there was yeah. this thing... There was shots and parts mashed into every scene that just didn't belong there. Yeah. Like, I'll, it would be an entirely different scene, and then it would shoot to, like, three seconds of the guy shooting the horse, and then just, like, switch back to the other scene. Ugh. I feel like that's the director over the editor's shoulder, like, okay, now I want to see the cat again. <laughs> Show me the cat. You think? I well, think so. I want to face this editor. This editor? Well, because... Tom thinks this editor <laughs> is good. Quote, unquote. Oh, I hate that guy. Ugh. I have so many questions. I thought, okay, what are they? Who is everybody? <laughs> like, um, granted, I missed like a smidge, maybe a sentence of the story that the old man and woman were telling about the ship. Yeah, I don't think. But that, I don't uh, know why is there a mummy? No explanation. Why, no, that's no explanation. Why is the old witch lady trying to raise the mummy her, her and daughter? her daughter? Her daughter. Why is the mummy interested in the daughter? Why is the ghoul killing people and throwing them down a well? Well, why is what he- do they have to do with the ship? <laughs> is what I want to know. Well, why was he killing people on his own for sport, and then he was just like hanging out with his mom, <laughs> his family, <laughs> hanging out with his family, <laughs> having himself a party, having himself a party. <laughs> um, and also, real quick, during that scene, it was like, okay, so the stupid weird woman, who's the mother of the ghoul, <laughs> the ghoul mom, Mommy she she. Uh, was trying to capture our main character woman and she's holding onto her leg and she's trying that, to stop her from running away <laughs> that was comical that, this was great so she's like holding onto her boot and they're like oh god no oh, and she's like trying to shake her free so instead of shaking her free or like really putting forth an effort to run away kicking her in the face kick her do it like half dead anyway yeah because she was already really hurt so what our main character does is she detaches the <laughs> gate. A, like a wrought like iron a, gate and she for a cemetery. It, lifts it up and impales this woman with it. And then and then the woman pulls the gate out and then has a dramatic death. <laughs> I know. I was like, why could you not move the stone slab an inch when you're trying to escape from that tomb, but you could pick up like a six foot wrought iron gate and impale somebody with yeah, it? Yeah, like over her head. It was insane. Oh, yeah. God. Nonsensical. Um, not much to comment then, but I, I think the, the tone of this movie was very well set. Every time we see the castle, it plays um, Takata and Fugue in D minor by Bach. <laughs> you know, that the, the classic like... Yeah, the ghost music, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and like as soon as that happened, I was like, I know what kind of movie we're going to watch. A bad one. <laughs> <laughs> and you were right. Yes. Uh, that was weird, and they they used the shit out of that. Oh yeah, that happened at least four or five times. Every yeah. single time we see the castle, that music plays. Yeah, hard cut to the castle, hard cut to the music, and it doesn't even. It's not just the intro to that either. It keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another question? Well, not so much a question. I guess it could be. I don't know. When the old guy is shooting the horse. Yeah. For the first like. 20 minutes that he's doing it i feel like they lead you to believe that he's missing every time because there's one shot where he shoots at the horse but then the horse like runs behind him <laughs> like he shoots as the horse is like running behind him in the same frame yeah it was like a and then weird montage edit <laughs> yeah and then when they were winding down that part i feel like they showed a close-up and the horse looked like it had bullet holes like in the side like it had been shot so I couldn't tell if he was like trying to shoot this horse the whole time or if he was shooting it and it just wasn't dying because it was like a supernatural being. Well, if this if this movie taught me anything, it's that if someone does get shot that we're just going to zoom in on it <laughs> like they did when he shot the mummy. 
Okay. He zooms in on it. So if we didn't see that, I'm assuming that the horse didn't get shot. And I would be surprised if that man and that horse were even on the same <laughs> shoot day. I'd be impressed if that man's even seen a horse in his life before. I yeah. couldn't tell if they just kept reusing the same horse stuff and did yes. like day for night too. <laughs> uh, when it was those shots were so mismatched. Like everything with him, the background was completely black. Everything with the horse, like the horse and the ground and the bushes were black and the sky was like a dark ish blue. Yeah. I mean, I know they, they recycled the horse stuff to death. And the same with the shooting stuff. I mean, I don't know how many times we saw the same shot. <laughs> Get it because he's <laughs> shooting stuff. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what a weird, weird thing. All right, let's let's rate. So let's rate it then. Yeah, I'm gonna go. With yeah, fuck I'm gonna you. have to give it an unfortunate fuck off. Oh my god, my fucking father. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah! What the ever loving fuck? <laughs> All right. If any movie deserves a what the fuck, it's this movie. Yep. <laughs> no words. There's no discernible plot. Um which actually begs the question of something lost in translation, but I guess we'll never know. Yeah, apparently um this movie did not have subtitles. No one subtitled it. And we saw the dub version and who knows who translated it for them. Yeah. Because there was a lot of repeat words a lot of repeat sentences that people would just say twice because the screen time was there for the person like cl classic kung fu dub yeah it, it was bad and i bet it did i mean the movie did not make sense to begin with guaranteed but yeah. the dub did not help yeah i give this a what the fuck i would recommend it to people in the same vein as like deathbed like it's so fucking bizarre you have to see it at least once it's it's just crazy yeah but you eric yeah, I'm going to go what the fuck also. <laughs> uh, very, very fun group viewing. Um, as we mentioned, we saw it at the, um, the Arkham film showing. We were there with you know about a good dozen and a half people, and we were all having a blast. Uh, it's a very fun movie to, to laugh along with other people at. Yeah. I don't know if I want to watch it by myself. <laughs> I think that might be a very boring and, and trying experience. Yeah, don't do that. Um, yeah. There was a good turnout tonight. Yeah, there was. Turnout. Um, uh, this movie kind of just... It's it's very it's completely incompetent. So I mean, I guess if you can see how terrible a movie can get and still keep you entertained, this <laughs> pretty good for that. Yeah, yeah. I had to turn to you guys at one point just to make sure that I wasn't the only one who had no fucking idea what was going on. <laughs> oh no, everyone else is just making perfect sense. Like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. and I, was like, <laughs> I was like, Tom, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> oh like, thank oh. God. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Who would you give this movie? Uh, I'm going to give it a what the fuck yeah. What the fuck yeah. Because, I mean, I'd have a hard time recommending someone to see it if I didn't give it a fuck yeah in some sense. But it still gets a primarily what the fuck because of what the fuck it is. <laughs> um, and I would suggest that in a group, you might have a good time watching this wacky, wacky movie. Um, it's just out there. And sometimes that's kind of satisfying, and and it's different because it's, it's it's a foreign film. It's got some decent, not good, <laughs> <laughs> decent like special effects lots entertainment. Of, it's got entertainment. Lots of bloody hand pumping. Lots of gags. Yeah, lots on. of like you know drippy nose bloods mouth stuff happening oh man when he <laughs> when the ghoul was getting the shit kicked out of him by that horse oh my god he was spitting blood for like 20 minutes <laughs> dude and when that mummy I, I forgot about that dude and the, and the mummy just like drooling blue foam <laughs> over and over and over just like we didn't get it the first 20 minutes. seconds they showed it to us <laughs> oh my goodness gracious but or the and mummy stepping on the guy's stomach and over and over, just guts falling out. Oh my god, that's right. Excuse me, you have some shredded chicken in your shirt. I'm gonna get that out for you. We're saving it for later. <laughs> kick, kick. I, I find it strange that this movie is 1985. Yeah, because it doesn't give off a 1985 vibe in terms of like narrative skill or like directorial competence. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like maybe something from the 50s that was also incompetent. Yeah, like it, it feels. Weird. Like something about it doesn't sit right. Feels like an early seventies, like super amateur. Yeah, 
Well, uh, so looking very quickly, looked this up on IMDb before we started, and the director of this movie, this was the last thing he directed in 1985. He had directed five movies previously between 1972 and 1985. Hmm. So it sounds like maybe it was like a hobbyist type thing? like uh, Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Final thoughts? This movie made me feel weird. <sighs> I know you're supposed to say that, Tom, but I had to co op it. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have weird dreams tonight. Uh, I might too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I wish we could have had Fallon on because she was like, I have so many questions as well. <laughs> I know. I know. That would have been nice. All right. So this has been Second Class Cinema. We watched Devil Story 1985 on uh, DVD at the Arkham Film Society showing in Providence. And it was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> But thanks anyway, Josh. We do appreciate that. And uh, it's a good time. Yeah. Uh, we like going to your events. If you'd like more information on Second Class Cinema, you can go to facebook.com .net .org. <laughs> In D minor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can listen to this podcast wherever you're listening to it now. Uh, also on iTunes or TuneIn or Stitcher or Podbean. SecondClassCinema.podbean.com can also find our stuff on youtube as well um i'm pretty sure that's it guys devil 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 devil